Hi, welcome to my first course. I'll be presenting here. That is estimation and detection theory. So it's a 500 level course that is provided uh, by a few IITs. Actually, what uh, is the case with this course is this has been considered as kind of outdated because uh, the techniques described here are uh, very old. Okay, this entire theory has primarily uh, been developed for communication systems. Now, things have advanced by a lot. Technology has advanced by a lot and there are a lot of tools at our disposal. So this course is considered almost irrelevant. But um, in at IIT Mandi here, um, the, this course has been redesigned to fit it into the premise of the uh, machine learning area. Now, machine learning is a hot topic now and uh, it is it is like raising the world. So can we find the foundational principles of statistical learning in estimation and detection theory? We will explore in this course and by the end of this course, you will have a very definitive result about it. So coming to what it is all about, okay? What is popping up in front of me? So basically, since it was, I said it is described, it is developed in, in, in relevance to communication systems. There are six signals. We need to detect it in some scenarios and we need to find out the values in some scenarios. So there are two classes of problems here. One is the estimation problem and the other is the detection problem. So what do we do in estimation? Especially if we sample a signal digitally. For example, we have a signal X and we sample it. And for example, there are N samples of the data. Now, if we have a parameter, the parameter from this data is a function of all the points, all the samples. If we try to estimate the value of this parameter, which is necessary in many cases, we call this an estimation problem. For example, we have systems like sonar, the sonar technology, where we throw an ultrasound deep down. And we try to, for example, find the height of uh, the, the find, find the depth of a water body, a sea. And even a better use case for which it was developed is, for example, we want to detect enemy submarines deep down. So it'd be throwing a wave and it would be reflecting the information back. If we want to estimate at what height the enemy submarine is, if it is there, we will turn to the problem of estimation. Now, if it is there, comes to the premise of detection. Is the enemy submarine really there? How well can we detect it? Is the problem of detection. So I think in a very crisp sense, I am making you clear about the premise and the problem we are trying to solve. Okay. And it is not only... Uh, it is not only very restricted to communication uh, systems as such, the applications are multifold. For example, we have a control system. This is a very complex control system we have. And for example, one of the small parts malfunction. If we cannot detect it, then no, not the word detection problem. If we cannot detect it, it might happen that the entire system might mal malfunction. There is a possibility for that. So detection is a very essential criteria for many of the real world engineering scenarios that, that we have. We need to detect. Primarily, it's a problem or a situation that comes under scrutiny. And if we detect it, if we want to estimate it further, the problem of estimation comes in. Okay. We will be developing rigorous mathematical foundational theories for estimation and detection theory in this course. I shall be, I shall be talking about it in a later section of this lecture. Coming to prerequisites, we have a course and because it's a PG level course, there are prerequisites obviously. The first prerequisite is probability and statistics. You need, you don't need mastery over probability and statistics, but basic concepts such as random variable, and a few distributions, a few probability distribution functions. If you know, for example, Gaussian, Poisson's distribution, 
etc etc i i think i think it will be much better if you start with those we'll be using a lot of random variables and pdfs here in this particular course to the extent if you if you if you come completely uh, going to a deep dive into this course all you might see is distributions everywhere <laughs> okay so uh, we'll go subsequently into the details of that but i won't be covering the mathematical uh, parts of the prerequisites here if you wish to i can form a different lecture series on this but right here it is not my intent so i would expect that you would have a fair background by which you can comprehend the concepts of probability and a uh, few very like very few uh, examples of statistics one more important skill that you need to take over it is multivariate calculus we would be extensively dealing with multiple integration uh, derivatives okay uh, there there will be frequent use of double de derivatives partial derivatives and n fold integration so you need to be uh, like comfortable with those concept not that we will be solving very high level problems with that but at least in understanding how the theories develop how uh, several aspects based on situations how various tools of the theory are developed you need to have a firm grasp over multivariate calculus so that you don't get lost in the in the in the mathematics that will be developing here okay now before starting any course it is it is always beneficial if we have a historical perspective to it okay now if we if we talk about history here see as i said this has been developed in the premise of communication systems when when there was world war you must understand one thing and and this would this would be covering a generic area of the nature and the tendency of human beings in general so we always need some identity to latch ourselves on okay our intellect functions with identity so often we build identity and when we identify very much with that we want to safeguard it now many people can hold a certain identity and we have commonalities now for example when the identity is of a nation safeguarding that identity becomes paramount becomes of paramount importance so what can destroy that identity what can invade or change that identity that is invasion from a superior power so what can you do to protect your identity you can increase your power you can increase your superiority how can you do that now by increasing by improving on your technology because uh, hands and legs won't do much uh, as much as the brains do nowadays so technology is the tool improving technology is the way okay so basically the theory was developed around uh, world war when we had to detect enemy submarines or enemy war crafts that would be coming there was a great deal to estimate the trajectory might be estimate the distance estimating various parameters of the data we would be capturing with our systems so that we could form the relevant relevant systems to safeguard ourselves any any technology even even the internet it was first started with arpanet it was it was first used for military purposes before it was rolled out to public and primarily the intent is to safeguard identity okay so it is it is so fantastic that the push to just protect human identity is one of the reasons we are studying estimation and detection theory today <laughs> okay uh, this this can be a uh, good insight that you can take take yourselves upon of course there are people who do science for the sake of science for the sake of explore, exploration not not defining themselves by any boundaries or anything but when it comes to engineering when we try to develop tools based on the theories of science developing the technology it often needs a push and world wars have uh, like come out to be significant pushes for that any world situations are helpful in developing technologies because there is a great fear of the loss of identity so this might be a very unpopular opinion but the the scale of technology is greatly uh, pushed by wars by the race for superiority okay even going to the moon was because of someone trying to pr uh, prove their superiority over something the us trying to prove their superiority over soviet union and vice versa 
so 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 basically historically this is how the theory was developed and we shall be looking into a very small aspect of the entire theory that was developed which can be applied to the basics of uh, in machine learning prin principles because we'll be just seeing how it is just in the next part so what are what are the learning objectives if i if i try to summarize the course in this lecture itself what are the learning objectives two theories detection and estimation theories these often go hand in hand because see detection when we want to detect some something a signal is there or not this can be very analogous to the classification problem okay so this is analogous to classification problem the problem of estimation is analogous to we are trying to estimate a parameter given a set of values we have we want to estimate something so this can be seen as a regression problem regression and classification are broad parts of machine learning today where we want to classify and we want to estimate so this is this is very analogous to detection and estimation theory and this is why this course we are trying to uh, like color it in terms of machine learning principles the principles of statistical learning so in terms of detection the very basic form of detection is the binary detection problem when we try to see whether something is there or not whether a signal is there or not whether a particular value is present or not so the binary detection problem is like binary classification is it's a yes no problem simply whether it is there or not and this can be helpful in many many areas many many areas can just be done with just knowing whether it is there or not for example if you want to detect a enemy submarine or we we want to detect a signal embedded in a noise so whether the signal is there or not that's all our interest will be in the binary detection problem when it comes to mri detection problem it is just a multi class classification pro problem it can be seen very analogous to that now we have several choices to detect from which one is it for example a very famous example is the mnist dataset where you train your first classification models on okay so uh, the mnist dataset has 10 classes of numbers from 0 to 9 now you try to based on an input you try to classify it whether that is 4 or 5 from any number from 0 to 9 this this kind of problem comes under mri detection where we have multiple hypothesis uh, we shall be looking into what what a hypothesis is don't don't worry about the terminology here so there are there are m m kinds of uh, m m uh, st statements we have and we need to detect which one of them can be the most relevant for that particular scenario that's the case with mri detection problem so we would be developing various tools and methods for solving this detection problem under various scenarios not all detection problems have the same amount of input to us some might have more information where detection becomes easier some might have less information where detection might get a little harder we shall be looking into all those scenarios here similarly when it comes to estimation there are parameters which are very deterministic we know that they have a fixed value and we need to estimate that value all those techniques which will be developing where uh, our assumption will be the parameters or we know that the parameters are deterministic will come under the classical estimation theory the classical estimation pro problem we shall be developing tools and techniques for that and there are cases where parameters themselves might be random variables where pa parameters might not be deterministic where there there will be a probability distribution attached to the parameters themselves if you don't understand it right away there is no issue at all we will be delving in deep into this topics so in that case we assume a particular notation we assume a particular thing and then we try to estimate the parameters that is the bayesian philosophy we should we should be discussing where this philosophy is coming from and why there is a necessity for such estimation and we shall be developing tools for it so for binary and mri detection there will be tools developed under various circumstances you can use this and in estimation theory under various circumstances you can use the tools of either classical estimation or bayesian estimation so this is all about the premise of estimation and detection theory that we'll be looking at and fin finally you can as the course progresses 
you can go and look deeper to see how the mathematical principles lie in the foundational basis of the statistical learning that we have today a big problem we have today is we have very complex and deep models which take on a lot of data and it does something it might be accurate it might be not but there is no accountability in the results we don't know why it works we just know it works how we don't know we don't know why n number of layers work and n plus 1 layer don't work so there are a lot of uh, black box scenarios when it comes to deep learning because we are just throwing data without really understanding anything much about the data especially when it comes to complex problems here is where the estimational detection theory becomes relevant because we'll be going into the foundational roots of what makes a classification happen and what and and by which methods we can regress values of data okay so i think i think uh, parallel to that so this is in no competition deep learning and estimation and detection are in no competition but they can be complementary to each other when it when it comes to gaining insights because at the end of the day it's insights that will help you in developing new ideas or in formulating new concepts the the better you are at insights the better you are at formulating problems okay so i hope this this gave you a good good introduction to whatever we would be discussing so in the next uh, lecture we shall be starting straight away with the simplest problem of detection the binary detection problem we shall be describing the problem in detail and then we shall be trying to find out solutions to it okay this is all about it for today's lecture thank you very much